Watch TV, promoting sustainable development. Your Wednesday evenings are always best spent with me, Kuku Asanibai, your gorgeous host on the Youth Avenue on Watch TV channel. Good evening to you all and welcome to tonight's episode. It's on this show that we sit to address issues that hinders our good as youth. Remember, it's all about you. And tonight we are continuing our discussion on leadership, youth in leadership. And but then our focus is going to be on women. Okay, so it's going to be women in youth leadership. You know, sometimes we need to empower the girl child a little bit because we were not given that much privilege. It's right now that we are coming to the spotlight. And so to join me with the discussion, I have here with me two beautiful ladies whom I would introduce to you very soon. But before then, please, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube page yet, kindly do so at Watch TV channel and also follow us on all our social media platforms at Watch TV channel. The program is sponsored by the Center for Volunteerism and Social Transformation, CENVAST. We are continuing our discussion on youth in leadership. And tonight, our focus will be women in youth leadership. So to introduce my guest tonight, I have here with me Annabelle Nubwake. Am I right to the name? Yes, okay. Annabelle Nubwake. Okay, so Sorry. she is the Speaker of Parliament for TTU SRC. Annabelle, you are welcome to the Youth Avenue. Thank you very much. It's actually the Parliamentary Council. Parliamentary Council. Yes. Okay, TTU yes. Parliamentary Council. Sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, and also we have here Sarah Jamra Amwakon. She is the General Secretary for um, Ghana Institute of Engineer, Institution of Engineering, okay, UMAT. You are welcome, Sarah. Thank you very much. It's an honor to have you beautiful ladies here with me in the studio tonight. Thank you. Okay, so let's, let's talk, let's talk about girls. Okay, so <laughs> first of all, how has your week been? How's, how's your week been so far? Okay, the week has been stressful for me because I had Miss Anissa to write. Oh! Week, and then... <laughs> So we are writing Miss Semester during this week, and mm. today too, I had some funeral to attend. So okay. see, the week has been a little bit stressful. Yeah, so that's, yeah. yeah. that's how you move about. Yeah, it. it's part of growth. I mean, they didn't tell us they lied to us, but right now we are getting to know it, and so I, we are I, cool. As for growth, you have to go through so many stages. <laughs> yes. so it's allowed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have it's to allowed. go through the stress. If you don't go through the stress, how will you get there? So exactly. It's exactly. surely allowed. Sarah. How's your week been so far? Has been stressful as well. Wow. And this is a political semester, and I'm aspiring for local news in my department. So oh, wow. Going for lectures, coming back, going for campaign, learning for vetting, and all. I don't even get time to sleep. Wow. It's really been stressful. Wow. Wow. Well, we'll get there. I mean, it's a process. So we just start like that, and once we're able to, you know, go through it, everything will be fine. Yes, mm -hmm. it's for. And when, when I heard her saying um, she was going <laughs> aspiring for a position, I just remembered I also aspired for a position in my school. Okay. And then the stress and all that, but thing. And you get to, through this process, you get to see how people really think mm -hmm. and then how to interact with people, people. in your daily transactions and yes. all that. So it's yes. a very good exposure for yeah. her. And I'll urge you to Continue carry on. That. Don't let anything in. Discourage you from that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure, obviously. Hasn't been easy though. Yeah, wouldn't be. Easy, though, yeah, wouldn't be. I mean, there is nothing easy. Yeah. Nothing comes by easily. You know, you have to fight for it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, looking at our topic, our discussion for tonight, women in youth leadership. First of all, Annabelle, tell us a bit about your personal experience being a leader, okay. and you know the leadership positions that you've held so far, and the one that you are holding now, and all that. Okay then. So thank you very much um, for this platform. Mm -hmm. And um, as I said, I have my colleague here. So <laughs> <laughs> the the woman the woman empowerment is yes. actually a goal that we all have to dive in and then achieve. Mm -hmm. I will start by listing some of the portfolios that are occupied in school. Okay. And then I will start talking about my experiences from there. Mm -hmm. So. First of all, I came to um, Sakari Technical University mm -hmm. and then in level 100, I was the course rep okay. for my class. So the course rep for my class. And then I moved on to further as part for um, the secretary for Association of Technical University Accountancy Students. Okay. And then I further moved on to um, contest for SRC elections. Mm -hmm. That is, I contested for SRC Women's mm -hmm. Commission, yes. of which didn't go 
the way that I wanted. Yes. But you know, I still ended up in the SRC uh, system, okay. being the speaker of the SRC Parliamentary the Council. Council. So I would say from scratch, I, I, I have had this leadership role since I was a child. Okay. This leadership and um, capacity and all that. Because when I was in, I remember when I was in primary, I was the girls' prefect for my school. Mm -hmm. I moved to um, DHS and I was the senior girls' prefect okay. um, for my school. So it started from there. Okay. Um, I actually sat back and looked at people criticizing leaders mm -hmm. in every way that they can. Then let me talk about this and I'll further move to women in actually in leadership. Actually, okay. We. They, I, I sat down to look at people criticize leaders and I was asking myself if you were in that position and somebody is criticizing you, how would you feel? So we there was um, this notion in my JHS that the current girls prefect was not working hard yes. and then um, there was there were all sorts of things going on that she's not addressing to uh, management of the school, let me put it that way. And then I felt Personally, I thought she was doing okay. So st people started criticizing. So I, I, I stood in for her, her. Sorry, I stood in for her during the time that people were criticizing her and all that. Then I told myself, let me put myself in this, in this role and see how well I'm able to play it out. Mm -hmm. That's when I contested for the girls' prefect in um, uh, JHS. Sorry, mm -hmm. but it's it's. From the JHS, I had it easy. I, I felt that wasn't, there was no <laughs> struggle there, actually. And then we, I moved to SHS. I wanted to aspire for a position, but unfortunately, my health condition there didn't permit me. So I ignored that one. Then I moved into the university level. My experience so far, I will see that you, um, this leadership thing exposes you as a lady putting the lady as well, as an individual, you get to interact with people. We are all not doing, I'm not doing psychology, but due to certain things that I've experienced, you know how somebody thinks. You know how to relate with a particular person. You know how to move your way around individuals and watch how you talk in public when you're aspiring for such position. Mm -hmm. So it, it has really taught me much and my experience has been great. I will always say that if I'm given the chance to come back to this earth and aspire for any position, I will. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you can say you won. Okay, Sarah, can you start about your So, with my leadership experience, when I started, like, I was an introvert, so okay. I didn't really like this leadership stuff. So, with SSS, they actually forced me to be the head <laughs> girl. Like, I cried that day, like, I really cried. <laughs> In the headmaster's office, I was like, no, Sarah, you have to do this. So I went in for it. The first week was really just like talking in public and all, but yeah. I started learning or speaking up small, small. So I was able to do that. Then I entered SHS. I'm a product of which. There were um, Red Cross and Cadet. I wanted okay. to be that tough and all. Mm -hmm. But they knew that she was really like, oh, your size, yeah, you can't do anything. <laughs> So I wanted to be very tough. Yeah. So I went to Cadet and I was the inventory officer. Okay. Then at Red Cross, I was the um, field supervisor. So, so with that, I was working with the executives outside the school. So okay. I got to network with them, how to talk. And it came to university. So I'm in second year right now. Okay. So when I came in level 100, I had a conversation with some of the whole executives. And they were like, this school don't really go in for like financial secretary or president so from there i was like no so i have to go for financial mm -hmm. so in my first day i was like okay so my department is there let me try the financial we didn't know that in the src constitution level 100 can buy for any okay position. so we, we went in for it me and some other girl so we went to we bought forms everything prepared for vetting mm -hmm. everything was successful then we all know for where this continue to then with a petition against us that the 100 are buying for position so we had to disqualify all of us wow. I, I was really disappointed <laughs> i was like i'm not going in for any Can other industrial position <laughs> so it was during that period that i heard dhi was also having their elections 
Okay. I checked their page and no one has gone for general secretary. Like, Sarah, why don't you go in there and start learning something? So I tested the president then it was like, oh, even level 100 can also buy there, but okay. since no one went, you can go in for that. So I went, I bought the form, filled it, some <laughs> one or two questions, and they gave me the position. Yes. In it, I've, I've learned a lot working with guys. It's really stressful. Man. It's really stressful. <laughs> Even when you bring your ideas on board, like they want to show you that they are the men, yes. so we should take this. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Don't you to hear them out? Hmm. You are a you girl, to, so you have to tell you to know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So with that, I was like, oh, let me also move from the GHI to something that is recognized nationally. Okay. So that's why I'm going in for the local news general secretary. Then we're there. I want to move to the SRC president, which I've talked to some people in my school. They were like, no, <laughs> your size and you being a lady, you wouldn't allow. No, so don't listen to them. <laughs> we still come for it. We still go. We don't try. Yeah, that's my the spirit. My leadership experience has been the best. You know, the best. So I've learned a lot though. And hmm, I think my personal experience has been shaped by my passion okay. to bridge the gap between the women and the men, like the gender barrier. Yes. Also create a more inclusive society for women to also share their opinions and ideas. Yeah. Wow, interesting, interesting. Yeah, I also had a chance to, you know, hold some leadership positions as well, SHS. Mm -hmm. I actually wasn't prepared for SHS, seriously. I was shy, like you see me walking and quietly, but then, you know, there were people in the background who were pushing for me to, you know, go. And then when I went to By God's Grace, I also had it. And then here in um, TTU, also, that one I was even appointed, applied at, yeah, the vice president. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I, so I, I yes. knew you yeah. from there, right? <laughs> yeah, that's where you actually met. That's where you actually met. Yeah. And actually, it hasn't been easy. So if anybody tells me that being a leader is easy, especially when you're working with guys, it's all easy, and all, that is not true. Yeah. You have to actually fight to be yeah. there, to be seen, or to be heard. Okay, so... Moving on, fast forward. Uh, so let me start this one with you. Okay. So with all of this, with the experiences you've gathered and all that, who would you say is a leader? In my experience, I would say a leader is someone who can inspire and also motivate others. Mm. And as someone who takes initiative and strives to make a positive impact. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily someone occupying a leadership position. And regardless of your gender or age or anything, okay. that's your leader is. Okay, Annabelle, can we hear you, please? Um, for my side of leadership, I would say a leadership is someone who sacrifices. Mm -hmm. If you can't sacrifice, you can't be a leader. Okay. And also, you have to place yourself in the shoes of the people you are serving. Consider yourself being there. Consider yourself being where they are and not where you are currently. Mm. So when you do that, you, you now think about their needs and then initiatives to develop them. Since now you feel you are there rather and not here, yeah. I feel leadership is all about sacrifice and then putting um, people that you are serving needs above yours. And yes. I, I, I also feel that a leader is not only somebody who is occupying a position. Mm -hmm. One way or the other, we are all leaders in yes. our own um, way or in our own environment. So far as you can bring a change. We are leading. So leader. Leader. That's it for me. Oh. Okay, so Annabelle and Sarah, there are a lot of people out there, okay, who think, especially the older generation, they kind of think that um, the youth are not ready to take up leadership positions and they are not that equipped to take over. How true is that, Annabelle? Um, for me, I would say it's never true. Mm -hmm. We have a um, youth um, member of parliament or youth and in parliament, yeah. are they not contributing? Mm -hmm. They are. We have um, people who are youth who are in big leadership roles. And uh, let me take, um, you are talking about women. I wanted to yes. find a woman and then use us, for example. But you let, let's take this guy after that. We come back when okay. we are talking about men in, in, uh, in focus. And this uh, looks. Nuke's president, his name is Dennis Labby. Okay. He's doing a great job. He's in PAU. He's um, advocating 
for the welfare of the Ghanaian students. Okay. On various platforms on every occasion that he gets, he wants to advocate. Is he mm. is he not doing well? Yeah. You see, we have we have um the first ever female president in yeah. Is she not doing well? Mm-hmm. Wherever you put a shoot, they will perform. Mm-hmm. Wherever you put a shoot in any leadership group, they will perform. We, the youth, have to brand ourselves and be equipped and be informed. Mm-hmm. And I tell you that perception is never true. It's now, it is, it is in this era that we need the youth mm-hmm. more to actually mm-hmm. take up this leadership. I wish mm-hmm. we would get a youth president in Ghana. Yes, yes, that's, that's our prayer. <laughs> <laughs> we need to take over. Sarah, your take that's on that. Question again. Yes, so um, people, a lot of people think the youth are not prepared to take up leadership positions, especially the older generations. They think we are not equipped to handle such positions. What's your take on it? Okay. I kind of believe it's true. Okay. Because we are not prepared enough to... We need a certain level of experience before we can take up some leadership portfolios or okay. roles with some sectors such as the highly technical or the specified one. It is more appropriate to get youth who have experience already before they can take up leadership roles. So mm-hmm. like I would suggest that the government or youth led organizations organize programs that would provide the youth with leadership skills and also gain experience okay. before they can take up such rules. But okay, with some sectors, with nothing like, with no experience, the youth can take up position. But with the national nukes that she's saying, maybe he started from somewhere, somewhere. before he got, got there. there. Yeah. You know, like a person with no experience can't get there. Like, yes. Or oh, one day that I want to be the nukes president. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work that way. Okay. So me, I believe we are not prepared enough. Okay. We need some trainings, two mentorship programs, mm-hmm. internships to be able to. Okay. So are you saying that the government and the youth-led organizations or the civil society is not really preparing the youth enough for the position. Yes, please. Annabelle. Um, <laughs> see, we have two sides now. Okay, She's yes. saying the other side. I'm coming from the other side. Yes, sure. From the um, example that I gave, mm-hmm. I'm trying to say that if a youth, in this era that you are in, I don't think the youth should depend much on the government and all that. In as much as the government are trying to help, yes. you also have to think about yourself and then brand yourself to that extent. Mm-hmm. Um, there are youths occupying various positions in the country. If they are not well equipped or if they are not well informed, they wouldn't have been there. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you. Now, me, what I would uh, I would say in um, to what she said is now the efforts now the government have to put in more effort they are doing it but i feel it hasn't reached that yeah. peak or yeah. maximum a lot can be so they, 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 they can put in more effort to groom and bring up the youth into leadership roles. but mm-hmm. for now i think the youth can occupy so many leadership roles in their country yes being it you personally branding yourself learning to nice if you aim for something you prepare for it you don't you don't just aim and you leave it at that particular standard you okay. understand yeah. yeah so um that's what i would say okay so right now looking at it more like even if um we have some of the youth okay being up there making their way into you know leadership positions and all that let's look at the percentage of women right now that we are talking about women is it encouraging the number of women that we see holding positions in our even in our schools in our society you know in our churches and then all of that is it encouraging and what else can be done, Sarah? What can be done? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right. I feel it's not encouraging. Yeah. But what can be done? Um, I think um, that educational institutions should provide mentorship and role models for the girls. Yeah. Who they will pair the girls with experienced female leaders so that they could groom them, provide them with their leadership skills and inspire and motivate them to take up leadership positions. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Annabelle, anything to add to that before um, we go for a short break? Okay. I'll also say it's not enough. Mm-hmm. And then 
uh, I've seen some initiatives coming up, but what I will say, I will say it, or what we can do, or what can be done is that I feel there are certain slots that should be um, left for women, women in either governance or any sector that you find that that will improve um, women participation. <laughs> there are slots that should be left um, for Let's women go. in the sense that uh, we are living. Let's say we have a slot of. Um, 100% uh, employment in a particular sector. Yeah. We are leaving 50% slots for women, women. solely women, yeah. occupying those positions. It will encourage them. The okay. system itself is not allowing women to penetrate. Now, if we are looking at women in youth leadership, we are discussing breaking barriers of gender inequality, okay? and then looking at ways of empowering the girls. Yeah, it's picking up certain leadership. Annabelle, what do you think are some of the key barriers, okay, to which women are unable to go in for certification or which prevents ladies from picking up certain Okay, so I'll first say low self esteem on the side of ladies or women in in some parts. Mm-hmm. And then I'll also say, I was talking about the system and the reports. Yes. Also, <laughs> the system as in the country that we are in and the perception that people have about women being in power is also part and it's hindering us so many times. And then tribalism. Okay. Tribalism in one sense too, is hindering uh, women for going into positions that will actually benefit people at large or the country mm-hmm. at large. Yeah. So, and then I will, okay, so from self, low self esteem, tribalism, and then the yeah. perception that people are having. People I think all it. these are barriers that hinder the female into going uh, into various positions mm-hmm. that will actually groom her rather than destroy her. Yeah. I, I, I don't know the perception that some people have. Yeah. See, um, let, I always take uh, Takari Technical University as an example because okay. that's the society that I'm in and I know what goes in and yeah. out there. We had a female contestant for SLC, for instance, and mm-hmm. you, you, you could see the, you could hear the, um, the rumors around and the, the grapevines and all that about yeah, And some people, the perception that people were having, yeah. can I come to a local dialect? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, but they would say, or back row bear day. The person has not even got in there. You're asking yeah. a back row bear day. Why don't you want the person to come in power and see what actually the person is going to do? And then a mom will share on home. Yeah, when they are, like, when they are coming the into, money to when dress they are coming up. into power, <laughs> when they are coming into power, they are sober. Yeah. When they get there, then they raise their um, shoulders. shoulders. As if it's different from the I, I, I guess I, that that's what I want to. And as if it's just different from their side. We have men who are sober when going into leadership. They get mm-hmm. them, they also raise their shoulders. Yes. The, the, so the hearsay around was not even encouraging. And what, what was even hurting me was that her own colleague females yeah. who are supposed to take the agenda upon themselves to push the agenda, some of them were even against it. Mm-hmm. And it was not encouraging at all. Mm-hmm. As at that time, I was also aspiring for a position, so I yeah. couldn't rally for her. But I can see that deep down, I was rooting for her to win because I felt it would have changed a lot of perception no, course, about yeah. women being in power. And it has. She came and then, still, people don't want to accept the fact that we have a female president, so they still want to cook up things to um, discourage um, certain things that she's doing. You understand? Okay. So even if women go in power, you still have people trying to discourage them while in power and even a barrier. Okay. It makes them go there and then they, instead of that um, position grooming them for their confidence level to go up, mm-hmm. some go there and their confidence level mm-hmm. comes mm-hmm. down mm-hmm. and it is not in the best. Okay. So anything to add to that? So as she said, I think the societal stereotype is the main cause, mm-hmm. the preconception notion that women can do certain things and they can't go in for certain things. Yeah. Like, women can go in for general secretary or they've left that for yes, the ladies. Yes, for the ladies, yeah. But for yeah. president, mm-hmm. no. As a lady, you can't go. Why does, a, why do men always want to be at the top for the ladies to be, you know, mm. under them? I mean, 
they feel like okay if a lady wants to go for a president should be the vice president yeah and not the main the president herself i think they also use the bible because mm. according to the bible you're supposed to be submissive to the men yes so, um, what is being submissive being about president. this it's about <laughs> what you have to offer right That's it's about what you have to offer it's not mm -hmm. about you being submissive or anything they just say things to favor them yeah. but they're not to favor the the, the and population if you the try general to population. challenge them to, they will say you're a feminist so exactly i mean they they head. have ways of covering out names for us for any lady who tries to you know stand up for uh, herself or something yeah i'd rather come out and stand up for myself and mm. then you tell me that i'm feminist i'll accept it <laughs> <laughs> i'm being an sg <laughs> yeah i'll accept i'll only accept it i i you are I, 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 I always say that these situations or circumstances that come around yeah if you don't come out to speak it rather brings you down mm. but it's better i come out to speak and you tell me i'm a feminist yes i'm a feminist yeah. i'm pushing for the female empower agenda mm -hmm. that's all <laughs> okay so right now why is it important that okay so all that with this that we are saying uh some of the importance of we rooting for the ladies pushing more ladies into taking up um, certain positions in the society but which other um what uh, what else can you add to that um as a reason why we need to motivate more ladies to take up se um, certain positions okay. yeah we, we we have to it's very 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 important in your um conversation in the beginning in opening yeah. the program you said yeah you need to empower women a little yeah. bit i, I guess <laughs> I, was, I was like hey a little bit you know we we have it's, the potential okay it, we have the potential. Yeah. Every lady has a potential. But sometimes they just need you pushing them just a little. Currently, we don't need a little bit. We need huge. <laughs> yes. Honestly speaking, we don't need a little bit. In this era that we are in, we need huge empowerment. Mm -hmm. Seriously speaking. Okay. And then the reason the reason why I'm saying um, that we need more empowerment and then the reason why females should be empowered is because mm -hmm. one, I always talk about our system that we have in the country mm -hmm. currently. We have more men yeah. being in um, leadership roles, being in the political field, and most of the sectors that we have in the country. Mm -hmm. And then we have fewer um, women. Okay. And then we are seeing that one um, natural characteristic of ladies are that, sorry, women, let me use women in general, yeah. are that. They are very caring and then they know how to protect certain things. You you can we can all attestify to it that yeah. when there is a man and a wife in the house, the wife that mostly keeps has so many things that the man doesn't even keep. <laughs> if we give it to the man, let's say <laughs> he will misplace it or something. They say they often give marriage certificate to women. <laughs> yes, honestly speaking. So considering putting in the um women having these natural characteristics yeah. and putting them in leadership roles. They are going to do massively well and bring the changes that we need. Mm -hmm. I'm being honest, the changes that we need are going to be brought by these women that the men are saying that they are fragile. Mm -hmm. The fragile aspect of them only shows up when you try to suppress them. Yeah. But I'm telling you that women are naturally strong. Mm -hmm. And then with this uh, argument, <laughs> <laughs> when, when I go out and then, I'm currently the second female speaker of the SIC Parliamentary Council. Yes. We had Manan, the, yeah, yeah, we had the first one. Yeah. And, then, and then when I'm talking in public, they'll be like, calm down. There are certain <laughs> things that you talk, we feel it's, it's, it's above you. No, I won't calm down. It's not above me. I have to say it yes. as it is. Saying it as it is makes me, um, um, how do I say it? Show the potentials that if I'm in um, this power, this power, Whatever I see or whatever I have to say to change the system or to bring development, yeah. I will say it. You can't suppress us. You can't suppress us. Mm -hmm. So we need more women in power to actually come and voice out. And how do I actually come and voice out? That's what I will say. And then with another reason I will give is that women in those days, back in those days, where we didn't have technology, where we didn't have all this modernization mm -hmm. going on, were kept in the kitchen. Mm How -hmm. do I say the women were made to stay in the kitchen? In the house, yeah. In the house, take care of the house and see how they were able to take care of these yeah. things. 
how much more leadership mm-hmm. took. They were channel in that times, there were the leaders there just that we didn't put a title. They, they didn't see, didn't put a title they didn't see that they were leaders in the house. Yes. They didn't see they were leaders in the house. I mean, you put everything women in place. Have been, yes, women have been leaders since the onset and they didn't see it. They, 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 the saying that they were saying that they are supposed to be in charge of the house, we being in charge of house, taking care of things, bringing check, isn't it? That the leadership would have been now. That is great, girl. Yes, so, is nice, Sarah. Okay, so adding up to the reasons why we yeah. get to be empowered, I think when we are empowered, it will build our self confidence and also self esteem. Yeah. And ladies going in for leadership positions would also promote the gender equality that we all want. Yes. To like to promote a sustainable development in our country Mm -hmm. and also i think leaders women going into leadership would also um, motivate the younger girls coming to also take up leadership positions Mm -hmm. okay so in doing this sarah what are some of the initiatives okay that can be implemented to help do this um I think they should develop policies and enforce them to take care of this um, gender equality so that like when guys try to suppress me the ladies there will be laws that will deal with them okay and also they are supposed to organize leadership programs and also skill building programs for um, ladies mm. especially to develop their leadership skills, their self-confidence and all. Okay. All right, Annabelle. Okay, so I've already said one in the beginning of my uh, my speech, sorry. I said that there should be slots solely um, left for women. Not only being secretaries. (laughs) No, no. It's it's not even about the particular portfolio. (laughs) I mean, if you are having a... let me use governance as for example if you're having in 100 slots mm. i feel there should be a 50 percent slot for only women to apply this will encourage them more mm-hmm. um to be um, in power and also um, motivate them mm-hmm. and also um i feel women um, in person or women should empower women women yeah not that will, that will promote down. it yes that will actually make it relevant and high yeah. because if I'm a woman, a woman talking against my fellow woman yeah. in power or talking up, up, against my fellow woman, what does the other gender think about it? Yeah. They feel that you yourself are not supporting your own gender. How much more me? Why, why should I come and support someone that you're supposed to support and not supporting? Why should I come and join you in advocating for this? <laughs> so I feel there should be Women, women empowerment. How do I say yeah. women in women? <laughs> <laughs> how, how do I say it? Women should empower women, women yes. and not rather to woman to woman empowerment. The, yes, woman to woman empowerment to okay. also um, raise that agenda very yeah. high. So it's very, very important. Yeah, so usually when um, some organizations come out supporting the girl child in schools, paying the fees and all that, people don't understand. They be like, they we need, certain things need to be. Like, it should be given to everybody, both yeah. sexes. I ask myself, I mean, yeah, sometimes it should be that way. But then here is the case. You guys were given the opportunity from the beginning. And the ladies were not given such opportunities. So it's right now that we are trying to find our way into the whole system, to the whole leadership things, you know, into coming out, learning, even educating ourselves. I mean, initially, women were not even attending schools. They were in the kitchens, as you rightfully said earlier. We were in the kitchens whilst guys were going to school doing all the trade and then all of that you know and the women were just in the kitchen so right now if the chance have come for us to also yeah. get such opportunities yeah. great you shouldn't be jealous when we are getting it <laughs> when, <laughs> shouldn't be. when i was contesting for the women's commissioner and portfolio in math school yeah i was campaigning and i came across one guy and he was like this woman commissioner women what do they do what what's their relevance in their SRC position yeah. what role do they play you know what's i once impact? i once told one gentleman that okay then you guys should also form a men's committee they said we don't need it so but, uh, what is your problem then i'm coming let me come down to what <laughs> the guy said so and he was arguing with me and then if i come into power what uh, how are the men going to benefit from 
me coming to power and yeah. being the women's commissioner. If not, then they should create another sector called the Memcom. Yeah. So that <laughs> they will equally uh, rub shoulders. Yes. And then I, I was asking him, with, we have six SRC portfolios. Mm -hmm. Count the number of guys that occupied um, them compared to women. Women, yeah. We have the treasurer being male. Mm -hmm. We've never had a female treasurer. Mm -hmm. We have the SRC president being a male. Yeah. We have the vice president. We've being never had male. female SRC vice president in Takari president. Technical University. So if we are saying from the previous uh, settings that was happening, we had the president being a male. Yeah. We had the vice president being a male. Sure, we have yeah. the treasurer being a male. We've never had a female genius ambassador. We have the genius ambassador being a male. Yeah. And then the only position that you get for women to occupy is the secretary <laughs> and then the women's They will come. Yeah. So you just, we're just two women. <laughs> yes. It's and comparing um, the ratio of four is to two. And then you are, you are, you are telling me that uh, that position is not relevant and mm -hmm. you don't understand why okay. it should be there. Rubbing our shoulders with four boys or four men mm -hmm. in that standard. How are we going to be heard? Yeah. I mean, the wom the women on campus, how are they going to be heard? Mm -hmm. It's just recently that the ratio has changed a little bit, yeah, having the yeah. female president, president and then female SRC um, secretary and then female. Oh, it's not even, a, I think I now think they are even rubbing the equal <laughs> shoulder. Six portfolios and then we have three, three. three, three yes. That's what we should That's improve. How it's supposed the to next be. one, I wish it would be four used to um, two. two. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> hey, like, that one there, the one yes. <laughs> uh, that won't be gender equality. <laughs> the, the, we are not promoting for gender equality. Oh, if, if, if it, if it could happen impact. that men can be more in a certain yes, and office then, certain, then it's possible for the it's, ladies it's, to it's also really go. Possible. So, and after that, I told the guy that, so you clearly see that there's no um, equal presentation of women in the portfolios. You mm -hmm. can clearly see that for yourself. So this is the time that the only portfolio that has been left for women to speak to should be made yeah. should be made and then it's relevant but you are not saying it's relevant yeah. when your girlfriend come and report a rape case you go to them <laughs> this is the <laughs> youth avenue <laughs> <laughs> this is the youth avenue and we are talking about women in youth um leadership okay so um annabelle and then sarah before we go okay what uh what advice would you give to young ladies out there what would you have to say to young ladies out there who would want to go into various pick up various positions leadership positions in their societies in their schools in the churches wherever they find themselves i will, I will always say that it's it's a big opportunity for them to come out of their various corners that they are mm. whenever i'm engaging with my male friends they'll be like Another, will you even get married at all? Are you not going to fight with your husband? <laughs> and I always tell them, no, it's about speaking now and then standing for what is right mm -hmm. for myself and my other colleague ladies. It's not me being a feminist or trying to rub shoulders with you. Yeah. But we are trying to say that allow us for us to come in. Give us the space. Give us the space and all that. So um, the advice I would give is that every lady or every woman she youth especially to utilize every opportunity that com comes across them. Now I'm looking for female. Now we've, we've had the first challenge. I'm training the challenge to all the universities in Ghana. I'm yeah. training the challenge to all the other technical the universities. universities. They should try out, advocate for women, mm -hmm. for them to get a female SRC president. And I'll tell you, they'll never get. This administration has been able to put in structures and good um, systems in place. Okay. If um to um this as the constitution is now in use. Mm -hmm. When we came, we didn't have a constitution. Yeah. If now you see the 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 ideas that has brought in, that has been brought on board is perfect and accurate. Every lady should utilize um opportunities. And then my my other problem is with the low self esteem. It's really worrying us. We should come out wherever we are mm. and to fully um come out and contest for positions come out and then engage with people learn from we should have mentors and yes. um, we have female and uh, females in ghana great women in ghana who are doing well we should start learning from them seek for guidance and counseling okay. to actually improve ourselves and i bet you in the next few years to come 
if it's not me, it's my other colleague, you know, who is the, um, <laughs> the president it. for the Republic of Ghana. Ghana. <laughs> Woo! That's Sarah. Nice. <laughs> okay, so my advice to the young girls, I want, and the yes. young women out there, <laughs> is to be confident in themselves. Like, when they find themselves in a male-dominated yeah, leadership portfolio, mm -hmm. they shouldn't be scared. Yeah. They should come out and be themselves and put their ideas to on board. And also, they should be resilient. Mm -hmm. Leadership comes with a lot of challenges and setbacks. So they should be able to bounce back and be able to learn from their mistakes and all the um, discriminations will be coming. They yeah. should stand firm. Mm -hmm. it, will, it will come. Yeah. yeah. So that's my advice to the ladies out there. And also remember that age or your gender is not a limit oh, yeah. to your leadership. So push forward, have the right mindset, work hard, be determined, you will get there. Okay. Yes, but do you know the funny thing? Usually, after uh, you see, when you are in an office with male dominated, like in male dominated organization like that, okay, after you bring out your view regarding something that needs to be done, right? You being a female, you say it and they ignore. At the end of the day, they come back and do what yeah. you were saying. If, if yes, that. Very, yes. Yeah, yeah, they yes. come back <laughs> and then they will be, they'll be doing exactly the same thing, but you know, they'll be hiding, they wouldn't mm -hmm. let you see. They, that they, that they is don't what want I'm to doing. directly take it from me. Mm -mm. They don't want to directly. They can't take that. <laughs> they don't want to take that. They don't want know? to directly take from you. But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm seeing that most of the innovative ideas that are being on board are from females. Yeah, so. yeah. And so, I mean, go for the positions. Do it, okay. Bring out your views. If you say it and it, it seems like they are not listening, just forget about them. At the end of the day, you realize them. You realize you'll be doing the same thing that you were talking about. That's how they are. I mean, that's how guys. <laughs> Some guys don't want to accept the fact that. No. And I, I, it hurts me that they use the quotation in the Bible that the mm. women have to be in submissive oh. and then. Just, so just forget about that one. Uh, that one. We, we, we submissive are submissive, mean, but then doesn't mean we shouldn't go for positions. I, I, I'm, I'm only trying to say being submissive doesn't mean you should, um, you should not come out to no. um, bring ideas on board and mm -hmm. all that. We can still be submissive to the men. Yes. And then still come out to occupy so many leadership roles. Okay. All right, so this one, okay, is a question that we, I ask all my guests. It's about the sustainable development goals. You know, what TV, what we do is we promote the sustainable development goals. And so which aspects of your, um, your activities, you being a leader and then all of that, which aspects of the SDGs are you promoting? Annabelle, can you start okay. with that? So I'll promote um, entrepreneurship. Okay. Um, Entrepreneurs are people who take risk. And then if you are able to take risk, it moves you to the next level. You get prepared for anything that comes your way. Mm. So I will encourage more entrepreneurship, especially with the females and all that, to come on board and involve in. Entrepreneurship doesn't mean... You, you might not have the business idea somebody has, but you might have the way to go about it. Some mm -hmm. people have the ideas, but they don't know how to go mm -hmm. about it. You contributing to that particular idea, you are still an entrepreneur. You brought something on the table, mm -hmm. and that's, that's, that particular thing made the thing work. So you are still being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So the, the entrepreneurship aspect is very, very important to me for us to um, be very confident mm -hmm. and break free from any um, settings that, that is um, going around. Mm -hmm. We should involve ourselves in more entrepreneurship Mm -hmm. and programs and all that okay sarah sdgs so um, what i do on my campus is to encourage some of the girls to go in so there's one girl going for financial security sometimes she comes to my idea be like sarah i want to stop i'm like keep forcing like you can do it and there's this girl in my department she's going for the president mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that they're saying about her but i've told her that she shouldn't back off like she forced yeah. hard she can do it Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, ladies, for coming through, for joining us on the Youth Avenue. We are so grateful. And as we leave here, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't end there. Just as you said, you've been doing it, pushing the young ladies to stand up for themselves, to go for um, certain positions and all of that. Let's continue to do that. That's the only way. I mean, somebody may be able to hear something like that from someone, right? Probably they are not hearing it from the people around them elsewhere, but you are the only one that they could talk to. Okay, so let's keep doing that. Let's not stop.
it doesn't end here. So that was Annabelle. Annabelle. Hey, this is her name. Annabelle. Yeah, not the first person struggling with this. Everybody's struggling. With okay. Nubuake. Yes. Oh, it's and Nubuake. It's a noun. You can choose it. Nubuake. <laughs> Nubuake. Okay. Like and then Nubuake. Sarah. Jamara Amwapon. Okay. Thank you so much. So Annabelle is the Speaker of Parliament for TTU. SRC Parliamentary Council, yes, and um, Sarah is the General Secretary for Ghana Institution of Engineering, yes, UMAT. Thank you so much for coming through. This is the Youth Avenue that brings us to the end of tonight's episode. Thank you so much for staying with us. Let's keep pushing ourselves, you know, and encourage somebody out there, encourage a young lady out there to pick up certain positions, to, to make the bold step into making a difference in his or her society. My name is Kuku Asanbayo, your gorgeous host. So same time next week, stay blessed. Watch TV, promoting sustainable development.